Cool. So let's start with the meeting. Um, so for those who are new or just joining again, I um, just want to reintroduce myself. So my name is Aaron. We do have other people here. And um, those people who have been here in the past meetings have actually been able to provide us with some nice blueprints of how the world is going to be looking like. So it, let me explain a little bit what the project is. So in this case, wait, I just want to make sure, is there anybody new here? Just in case I don't, have, I don't want to repeat myself. If anybody's new, please do a thumbs up or put like on the chat. If so, uh, if not, that's the case, we're just gonna start. Does everybody know what's going on so far or does everybody need a, a recap? Okay, so assuming of the quietness, I'm gonna just go ahead and we're gonna start with the what's going on with the next week. Um, okay, so today, right, what we're gonna be doing is showing you how to collaborate and showing unity itself. So I believe most of you here are pretty new to unity itself. So I wanted to show you the simple tools that unity, you can work with unity to start actually creating some content, right? Um, today goal is to basically show you guys um, the grid system. Oh my God. We have another ice cream truck passing by. How many ice cream trucks are here? Um, I'm so sorry about that. Hopefully you guys can't hear that. If you guys can, I'm, I apologize. But like I was saying, today I want to show you a, a grid system in Unity. Uh, and I want to make sure that you guys understand this grid system so that everybody um, is able to collaborate without colliding with each other. And what I mean colliding, we'll get that in a little bit. So Let's go ahead and start. Let me just pop this presentation. Hold on, let, let, let me let um, the ice cream truck pass by. He just came back for some reason. Okay, he's gone. I'm sorry, I apologize for that. Um, let me just open the chat here. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so as we mentioned, um, we have this project burrito that we're working on, just a quick, um, um, do you guys know why burrito by any chance? No, I don't think so. Uh, why exactly? <laughs> it's pretty, pretty dumb, but so, uh, VR chat itself is called, is spelled at like this VR chat, right? And VR chat is a game. I'm not sure if anybody's familiar with VR chat game. It's a social place. So people can actually virtually talk to each other, right? And VR chat is spelled like this, VR chat. And um, so burrito, because so in El Pollo Loco, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that. There's a burrito called the BRC burrito. So it's, it's spelled like this, right? BRC. So we, we just named it VR chat because it's the closest thing to VRC or VR chat. So Project Burrito. It's a pretty dumb thing, but um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with BRC burrito. Yeah, right. This is dumb. I love it. Yeah, it's like a dollar. It, it was it was my college saving money a day because it's like a dollar or two dollars. It's not it's not, big. It's not like that expensive. Um, but it, we call it Project Burrito just for that same reason. It's the closest thing to BRC. BRC. Um, cool. So here we have a Project Burrito, and I'm gonna explain the grid system. So. In Unity, right? So in Unity, we have this um, game. I can't click on my next slide. There you go. We have this world, right? 
So I created this, what I call the foundation of this game, right? The foundation is what you guys are going to be building on top of this. So the world, the buildings, anything that you're going to be building, it's going to be on top of this. So if we have this world in the 3D view, if we look at from the top, it's going to look like this, right? So the grid system that I'm talking about is essentially this grid system here. Can you guys see my mouse by any chance? Yeah, yes. we can see your mouse cursor. Awesome. So what I'm going to be mentioning is the grid system here. So this world is split into four quadrants. So if you guys remember math real quick, um, in the X, Y plane, right, we have the quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Yes. So in this X, Y system, what I want to do is basically separate it in such a way that you guys can understand this using a grid. So if we go ahead and look in the next slide, it might look like this. So in this grid system, everything's separated via numbers, right? So if you go back over here, one of these squares right here, let's talk about the spawn point. So the middle is the spawn point here. This spawn point is a 30 by 30 meters. So in the world that we're doing, everything's split by meters. So in this case, the spawn point is a square that is a 30 by 30 meters. Next to that, we have that hallway. I call it the hallway right. So the right hallway. And then we have the hallway to the left. And then we have hallway to the top, hallway to the bottom. So that's essentially what I'm doing is oops, explaining what this is. So we have the hallway to the right here, hallway to the left, hallway to the top, and hallway to the bottom, right? And we have, like, like I mentioned, the spawn point in the middle, right? So that's a, bit of a, that's a bit of a mouthful. Why don't you just call it left hall, right hall, top hall, bottom hall? It's top hall. So, I mean, you could, I guess you can say it wherever you want. But like, like I mentioned, this is how a name different now. You can name it like however you want to. doesn't really matter. I just want you to understand it's a hallway, right? Okay. Cool. So like I mentioned, all these hallways, it's split by a 30 by 30 meters. So the next block here is another 30 meters block. Then we have another 30 meters block, another 30 meters block, and so on. Eventually, if we add up all these uh, blocks here, essentially, it adds up to 120 meters, right? Does that make sense? 30 by 120, right? So essentially, what I want you guys to understand here is that this- Sorry if this sounds dumb, but how big is a meter? How big is a meter? I'm not really sure. Um, like, I, I would say a meter yeah, compared, is a meter. Com yeah, compared <laughs> to feet and inches. Okay. A meter is about it. three feet. Three okay. feet. There you go. So, thank you. Yeah. So, a meter by meter, in this case, three feet. I'm not really uh, in, into that meter world. I'll just say it's a meter. Here in the VR, a meter by meter, it's how wide uh, uh, a person in VR chat is. So, I'm going to explain that right now. So, but just think about it this way. When somebody spawns into VR chat, you are a meter by two. So you're a meter wide and two tall. So two meters tall, right? So if you guys want to see that, as you might see, this world looks pretty small here, but soon you'll realize that you're actually pretty tiny since it's a 30 by 30 meters. And I just explained that a person is a meter by two you're actually pretty small in the corner. You'll see how big this world is right now. So the next thing I wanna mention here is the quadrants, right? So here quadrant one would be considered a room, right? So if you wanna uh, talk about this as instead of a quadrant, I'll consider it as, as a room. So we'll call it room one, room two, room three, and so on. So each of these rooms, like I mentioned, is split into smaller, um, smaller um, blocks, right? I just haven't highlighted them here. I don't wanna have a bunch of lines, but you'll see, notice that every block is a 30 by 30 meters. So essentially um, everything split into a 30 by 30 meters blocks, everything, right? Now I wanna explain a little bit about the quadrant, the first quadrant or the first room, right? So I'm gonna zoom into that. If I zoom in, it might look like this from the top view, right? And if I zoom in here, we'll see that one of the floors is selected. So let's zoom into that. So do you guys understand this point of view? 
where I'm, where I'm looking at? Yes. Yes. Awesome. So I'm going to zoom into that one quadrant. And then within that quadrant, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in into this one block. So this might look a little bit intimidating here, but all I'm doing is explaining the same thing that we zoomed in. We're explaining it in, I'm sorry, hold on one minute. Apologize, somebody was getting food here. Um, so yeah, so essentially what I'm doing is basically creating this, um, I'm zooming in into this one flow right here. So if you zoomed in in the grid system, it would look like this. So this quadrant, right, would have uh, floor one. So if we look over here, floor one, floor two, floor three, floor four. I'm gonna explain that a little bit, visualizing, right? Right now, just, Bear with me. So this floor one is split into four different floors, right? Floor two is also split into four different floors. And essentially what I'm, I want to do here is that here in this room, right? This quadrant one or room one, what people, how people are gonna collaborate is, is that they're gonna take one of these floors. For example, let's just say Steven here. Steven here is gonna take floor two, section two that's considered this flow right here. And as you notice, since everything's in a grid system, they have boundaries, right? So in this case, Steven is not allowed to go beyond 75, right? Because that would be considered floor three. And Steven is not allowed to go less than 45 because that would be considered floor one. Does that make sense? Understood. Yes, so as well, Steven is not allowed to go below 45 in the Y, uh, and I call this the Z axis, right? And Steven is not allowed to go above 75. So anything that Steven creates in, in, in content related in the world, they he would basically uh, create it within these parameters or these boundaries, these imaginary boundaries that we have, right? So I want people to understand the grid system here, right? That there's boundaries and people are gonna take one of these floors and create their own things. And I don't want people to overwrite these boundaries so long as you guys come in with an agreement, like Steven and I, we're gonna do something between here and it's gonna take both of these floors. We're gonna come with an agreement and we wanna make sure that nobody goes above those boundaries, right? I'm sorry, one minute. The idea behind that is that eventually people are gonna take their own floors and create bound, uh, some content. And all we're gonna do is just import those floors into an original file. So. Let's just say that we're going to import those floors into the, the world itself. We're going to review it. We're going to re review what content you created. And we're going to um, put that content into the world itself as an official edit. So, so far, does anybody have any questions with this grid system so far? I'm going to show a little quick animation how this grid system works in real life. Um, but I want to make sure everybody's coming along and understanding this so far. So I'm gonna go look in the chat or go ahead and talk if you have any questions so far. I understand. Awesome. I got it. I'm just gonna wait one minute. If anybody has questions, go ahead and also chat, use the chat. If not, I'm gonna continue in one minute. Okay, I'm assuming that nobody has questions. Okay, so far, I'm hoping that it's making sense. I'm basically essentially teaching you guys this grid system so that when you view, let me go here, when you view this world like this, you don't see this, you see a grid system, right? And that's what I essentially what I want people to understand, right? This would allow us to collaborate way easier, um, allow us to collaborate in a, such a way that people are not overdoing the boundaries. Now, I did assign uh, a leader within each room, right? Here we have the conference room. We have Steven as the leader in the game, not the game room, I'm sorry, the social room. We have Carrie over here. And the leaders are going to be in charge of seeing how we're going to split this just because they have an idea of how the room might look. Obviously, anybody within that room can make changes of how the room is going to look. But it's up to you guys, anybody inside that room, to make those changes with the leader of that room. 
Does that make sense? In addition to that, um, the leaders might take the whole quad quadrant, might take the whole quadrant, just because each quadrant, right? Um, what's it called? Um, he might be able to create, um, I want to say the, the room itself, like the roof and everything that, that belongs to the room. He might create the room um, using all the quadrants in this case. He might, I say he might, uh, but he's in charge of overseeing the whole quadrant itself. So then we have, like I said, that we have that quadrant and that's what the leader's going to do. So, okay, just like I said, dimension. Does anybody have any questions so far? Okay, I'm going to keep going on. Um, Actually, yeah. Yeah, how go ahead. We, how do we tell each quadrant apart? Each quadrant apart? Yeah, um, because so, like when mm -hmm. you, when you, looking back on the oh, whole over, on the, oh, looking at the over, overall view of the whole thing. Like this? No, not, not your, not your chart the, of the actual world. Like this? Yeah, it's all white. Uh -huh. All plain white. Right. That so is this is, like I said, this is a picture. So let's go ahead and actually talk about that, which that's going to be my next presentation. So bear with me real quick, right? So what he was mentioning is that how, how can we make sure that this world, um, how can we make sure which quadrant is which quadrant and how do we make sure which floor is which floor? So everything split here through uh, through some assets, right? So like I mentioned, this hierarchy that we're going to be working with, um, it's split in, in such a way that everything's, everything's um, created specifically, in a sense, split. Everything's splitted in such a way that you can add content to that asset itself. So let's talk about one of the assets here. So as you notice, what's being highlighted here in the world is the spawn point. Does that make sense? So in, in the spawn point, right? We have here in the hierarchy of Unity, spawn. So really quick, I want to mention, does everybody here understand hierarchy and Unity? Or do you guys want me to explain that a little bit? Remember, I, I kind of want feedback just because I want to make sure where are you guys in, in the sense of Unity? The less I have to explain, the better. But if you guys need help explaining, even better too, right? I want to make sure everybody understands what I'm talking about. And hopefully, you guys can collaborate with us. So does everybody understand? What um, what the hierarchy is in Unity. Thumbs up if you guys do. Thumbs down if you guys don't. Or chat. I understand. I understand it. Okay, cool. So let me just double check the chat. Sometimes I cannot see this chat here. Okay, yeah. So really quick, Vanessa. Uh, do you have um? Any experience with um, art or Maya or what was the other thing? Um, well, have you ever seen hierarchy in the sense of of a different version, like a different software, by any chance? Okay, so this hierarchy is basically, you know, in a sense of of kind of like layers. How everything, the world is filled with layers. So, for example, in this case spawn is it's on top of all these layers so let me actually go into the world real quick so i can see this let me stop this presentation real quick okay so as you can tell this world here that we're working with it's essentially built with layers so for example the spawn point is one of the one of those layers the hallways is one of those layers quadrant one is one of those layers right quadrant two three and so on everything is built with layers so essentially what i've done here is basically create layers upon layers in such a way that you can create content within those layers um are you showing this um it's showing oh, us the powerpoint i'm sorry let me double this is zoom things one minute let me share my whole screen actually can you actually see this my bad Oh yeah, you can use cool. it up. Let me start that over again. So, like like I mentioned, right? Uh, let me double check the chat. Okay, like I mentioned, um, Unity it's built with layers in a sense, right? 
So in this case, Unity creates, this world is created with layers. So for example, in this case, a spawn point, it's a layer of that world, right? So if we take that layer out, we can just like move that layer anywhere we want. But essentially that, that, that layer is part of the world, right? So in this case, we have layers upon layers. So in this case, we have the spawn point as one of those layers, the hallways as part of those layers, right? We can actually move the hallways completely. Um, we have quadrant one as part of those layers as well. We can move that whole quadrant itself. Or in this case, you can think of the quadrant, the room itself. We have quadrant two and so on. So everything is built with layers. And essentially what I have done here is create layers upon layers of these, um, these um, the, the world basically, right? So for example, let's talk about quadrant one, which really quick I'm gonna mention. Quadrant one, if we zoom in here, it's built with different layers, right? So what makes quadrant one a quadrant one or a room itself? Well, we have the floor here, right? We have the wall here to the, to the right, and we have the top wall, right? And we also have a floor. So essentially what makes this quadrant is three layers, right? And that's what we have here, right? Quadrant one is one layer. Quadrant two, I mean, quadrant one, the wall to the top is another layer, and the floor is another layer. And that floor is split into even more sections. So let me go ahead and open this real quick. This uh, quadrant one floor is actually split into different um, layers, right? So we have floor one, floor two, floor three, floor four, and so on. And upon that, we have even additional layers. In this case, we have floor one, floor two, floor three, floor four. It's actually it's just a bunch of layers that creates this world, right? And the hierarchy system allows us to tell us what quadrant, or in this case, what asset it belongs to. So that's the whole point of the hierarchy system. So in this case, this wall belongs to quadrant one. Cool. So that's a little bit uh, introduction to these layer systems. Let me double check if we have any chat. So hopefully that makes some sense. Like I said, it's okay if it doesn't make sense now, but as you working with Unity, you'll see that everything is pretty self-explanatory. But this, like I said, mentioned, I just want to quick mention, hierarchy system is basically a bunch of layers that makes up the world. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead with the next presentation if nobody has questions. And I'm gonna explain about that hierarchy itself. Okay. So let's go explain with the hierarchy. So we, one of those layers that we were talking about is the spawn point, right? And here I have information. That's up to you guys to uh, view this information. I'm actually going to share this presentation in the resources in Discord. Um, but don't worry about this information right now. I'm just giving you information such as um, what um, what's it called? Um, what is that size of that asset in this case? And like I mentioned, the spawn point is a 30 by 30 meters. And you guys want to imagine um, how big is this um, spawn point? Like I mentioned, one by two meters, right? In other words, one wide or just one meter itself is how big you are in that world, just one meter. So if you have 30 of those, you can kind of imagine how big you are, right? So like I said, the spawn point, right? And the hierarchy system is three and the size of this is a 30 by 30, right? So I'm going to mention that. And the next thing I'm going to mention is the hallways, right? The hallways is consisted of all these halls, right? All together in the hierarchy system. So one of those hallways, right? Like we mentioned is the right hall, right? So in this case, the hallway, the hallways is the hierarchy of four, right? So meaning when you look into the, the hierarchy, it's the fourth thing that you see here in the hierarchy system. So the hallways is consisted of all these things together. The right hall, the left hall, the top hall, in the bottom hall, right? Cool. So let's go in depth to the hallways, right? So let's talk about one thing, right? And that's the right hall. So in the right hall, um, let me be sure we have no messages. Cool. So in the right hall, which we section off from within the hallways, right? We have the right hall, right? Oh, sorry. 
I said that wrong. The, we have the right hall under the hallways, right? So in this in this case, the idea behind it is that if something happens with the hallway and we have to move it, we can move the whole right hall all together, right? But we have this hierarchy system that allows us to do that. So the right hall is consisted of smaller things, right? We have a right one, right two, right three, and right four. If you can actually see over here, we have the right hall and then we have smaller things. So in this case, the, the hallway, oops, that's a typo right here. It's not 260, it's actually 160. Um, actually ignore this math, I, I'll explain why, but just know that the hallway is consisted of four by 30 meters, right? So in other words, 30 by 30, four of them, right? Um, so like I mentioned, the right hall is consisted of four right floors. So let me talk about that one floor. So if you notice for the hallway, we can actually do this, right? We can actually move the whole, whole hallway, like I mentioned, right? And as you notice, the hallway also is consistent with a wall. I know that wall in the back looked like it was part of one of those quadrants, but it's actually, it's, it, it's wall itself. It's one wall for the hallway itself. So as you notice, like I said, the right hall uh, allows us to, to move the whole hall together. If we select that asset itself, Anything below, we call it the children in the hierarchy system, it's children will move along with it, right? So let's go talk about that one floor, specific floor, like I mentioned, right? This one floor, like I mentioned, is a 30 by 30 meters. And then we go back to the coordinate system that we mentioned, it's actually this floor right here, right next to the spawn point. That would be considered right one, right? This, this would be considered right two. I'm not sure if you guys can see my mouse. I know it's a little white, but hopefully you guys can see this. Um, basically, we have right one, right two, right three, and so on. Uh, here we go. And the, re the reason for that is that we can also move the whole right uh, floor or the right one floor, right? In the hierarchy system, it's under, uh, what's it called? Four, point one, point one. And then if you guys just follow the hierarchy system, it's just one below that and one below that, right? So let's move on from that. Like I mentioned before, the right hall also is, has a wall, right? Has a, its own separate wall from the quadrants. So then we have here, um, I forgot to mention how tall this is. So like, like I said, mentioned it, uh, I'm gonna fix this later on, but essentially the wall here is a one by one meter, meaning the wall thickness is just one meter thick and it's a one by one meter. And now how tall it is, is actually 20 meters tall. So if you guys can visualize that, I'm gonna show you that in the game right now. So hopefully you guys can visualize it, visualize it right now. It's 20 meters tall. And the right hall wall is belongs under the right hall. So what I'm essentially what I'm teaching you guys here is the hierarchy system in this grid system, right? how everything's connected and how everything it's going to be dragged along. If anything happens, any content gets put inside out um, that asset, right? Here, we're going to talk about quadrant one, like I mentioned. So in quadrant one, um, it's where the room is. Here. So if you guys don't want to think about quadrant one, just think of quadrant one room or room one, or in this case, I call it quadrant one level one. So like, for example, level one as in the floor one, not floor, uh, that's probably confusing. Like in an apartment, you know, you have different levels. So that would be level one, right? If you wanna add a second floor of a second story, level two, we would have to just copy that quadrant one and paste it and then we have a level two. So in this case, I know it says that right here D2, but that's something it's not shown here, but it says quadrant one D2, or in this case, I, I forgot to fix it, it says, level two it should be level two cool so like i mentioned um this whole quadrant itself is it's for the room one room it's set itself and imagine we have this hierarchy system for every single room right so every single room would also have q1 r wall q1 r i mean sorry q1 t wall q1 f wall in this case r stands for the right t stands for the top f stands for floor which we're going to talk about that right now. So within that quadrant one, we have top right floor one. So if you notice quadrant one, we have one floor, 
right? So that one floor is, is under quadrant one floor wall, which is under quadrant one, level one. Hopefully that's not that confusing, but I just essentially I want you guys to understand this hierarchy system of where everything's at. So if you want to select the whole floor, that's actually part of the quadrant one, or in this case, room one, right? And then aside from that, let's go a little bit deeper. And this is the last thing I'm gonna show you. Floor one within that, that floor one. I know it's kind of confusing. Just think of one of those squares within that floor one, right? So we have one, two, three, four. Like I mentioned, we have one, two, three, four uh, floors. So this is just a simple explanation here. Like I said, this information here, which I'm gonna change it up and send it back. You guys can always review this presentation of how this grid system is in place. The idea behind this is that, like, like I mentioned, collaboration wise, right? We wanna make sure that everybody is working on a specific floor for each level, right? We don't wanna make sure nobody's colliding with each other and putting content where it shouldn't be, right? So that would help us communicate better. And that's the goal here to communicate. Look, I'm gonna be taking floor one under level one or so on. And you're gonna be taking floor two under level one, right? And so on. I want people to make it, communicate in that sense that they know their boundaries and so on. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is this right wall right here. So part of that quadrant, right? Like I mentioned, we have a wall. And as you can tell, it's highlighted over here in this picture. That, that's part of quadrant one, level one, right? And as you guessed it, we also have the floor, right? The floor is the whole thing, the bottom part of that one quadrant. And that's consistent with the floor. And that's pretty much it of how the hierarchy system works here, or in this case, in burrito foundation. As you can tell, uh, that's what the scene is called up here. The scene is basically the whole world. Uh, and it's called Burrito Foundation. And we have a version number here. Right now it says version 0 0.04, but currently I've been working on a new version. And that's, let me open this. Can you guys see this? Let me make sure we guys see this. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. You can you um, the up, right? Yes, I do. So as you can tell, I'm currently on version 0 0.06. So like I mentioned, there's some changes here and we're not even in version one yet because there's there's a lot of things we have to change, but I just want you guys to understand this foundation that I'm creating here. This is what I call a grid system in this case. So people can collaborate. So, and Steven, do you mind uh, collaborating with me? You know how we talked about yesterday? Yeah. Cool. So we, me and Steven are gonna collaborate and I'm gonna show you how this collaboration is gonna work, right? So. Really quick, before we start collaborating, I want to show you how this world actually looks like in the game itself, right? So assuming you guys have all the tools select, um, installed, remember, there's a video out there that I po posted and exactly what you need to install. But assuming you guys seen that video, I'm going to go ahead and start the game. So click here, build and test. Might take some time. My computer is actually dying. Let me go charge it. Cool. Okay. Let's just wait up for this to load. So far, does anybody have any questions? Meanwhile, this is spawning. Okay. Assuming everybody's quiet. Okay, here we go. So as you notice, this is the room itself. I mean, the world itself, what we were explaining, right? And as you mentioned, you can tell, I'm gonna jump right now. So I'm gonna hit the jump button, the space bar. As you can tell, this world is actually massive. In Unity, it doesn't look that big, but I want you to understand how big this world actually is, right? So if we go right here, what, this is the floor of quadrant one that we mentioned, right? This is the floor itself. If, like I mentioned here, right? Um, this is a one by meter, one by one by one meter. So as you notice, if we look at one of these blocks, this is a one by one by one meter. So X, one meter, Y, one meter, and Z, which is depth, it's also one meter, right? 
So at the end of this hallway, this is the hallway to the right, like I mentioned. At the end of this hallway, we have this wall right here and it looks pretty big, right? That's actually how big um, the wall is. And that's actually 20 meters tall. Does that make sense? Yes. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, is this video um, laggy right now? Maybe because my computer cannot handle it. Yeah, it's laggy. Okay, um, I'm going to try to go slow. But you guys get the idea. Hopefully, you guys are understanding this. If anything, you guys can actually lock in, in, in your Unity if you guys remember how to. Uh, you guys can launch this and actually play with it. That was the idea behind it. And I actually already have this scene created for you guys. And let me go back over here. I want to make sure that, oops, not that laggy. Sorry, I, I messed with the settings to go fast. So you might see movements fast. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to look at the floor. Is, uh, is everybody looking at the floor? Yes. Can you guys see the floor? Cool. One of these floors, like I mentioned, is a one by one meter. So if I jump, you're going to tell that, that how small you actually are to that 30 by 30 meters. So if you look over here, like I said, mentioned, this is uh, 30 by 30 meters, right? The floor I'm in. So like I mentioned, this is how the world looks. If you guys, like I said, want to test this out in your own computer, just make sure you have a Windows and you have the scene already uploaded and all the tools necessary. Go ahead and test this out. I already gave out the scene itself. It's under the Discord channel, under the resources. Just go ahead and import that scene. If you guys need help importing, um, I'm going to show you guys how, actually. Um, I'm going to stop this game just because it's eating all my resources. And hopefully we have a chat. Yeah, it's anybody in Discord by any chance. I just want to make sure that everybody's in Discord mm -hmm. or at least have, because Angelica has also provided us um, some, let me see, in Canvas, you can also download the the scene in Canvas. So hopefully everybody's on Discord. So just go ahead and look at Canvas, Canvas for um, the scene itself. Cool. All right. So let's start with a um, little bit collaboration, right? So, so Stephen, right? Go ahead and create. Let's go. We're gonna create something in floor two, right? And make sure you're within your boundaries, right? So, like I mentioned, under floor two, go ahead and create something, and make sure that whatever you create, it's under floor two, in quadrant one. Okay. Right. So. Meanwhile, Steven is going to go ahead and do that. Actually, Steven, do you want to show your screen so you can see how, how, how it's done from start to finish? Yeah, just give me a second. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing screen. Meanwhile, Steven is setting it up. Like I mentioned, I did send out a new, um, uh, what was it called? Um, a new version of the Burrito Foundation scene. So as, like I mentioned, the scene itself is the whole world itself, and it's right here. I sent out a new version of this and it's under the VR resource channel under Project Burrito on Discord. And it's also on Canvas. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing screen here. And it's in, uh, it's in Quadrant One, right? Quadrant One, correct. So go ahead and share your screen and so you can show how, how to import this scene, right? Okay. All right, so, cool. Oh, can you go ahead and delete the scene and show them how to actually import it? Right. Okay, let me get rid of this. Actually, you can't get rid of it, but you can. Right, cool. um, yeah, you have to like, um, because you have to have one scene at least in Unity, which is right. that sucks. Uh, go ahead, go under real quick, under scenes, or let me see. Oh, you don't, just create a whole new scene. So right click on, on, the, on the hierarchy. Yep, just create a new, I believe it's under video, try video. Oops, I forgot how I created actually a new scene. Um, that's an interesting thing. Um, it, it's still around there, I just forgot, honestly. Um, just go ahead and just make it seem like we have a new scene, right? So just minimize 
minimize the hierarchy on burrito foundation. Just minimize that, yep. And just go ahead and do what you were gonna do in the beginning. So assuming he downloaded the file, he's gonna go to his file, file explorer, right? Yeah, after you would download it, it would end up in your download section on your, uh, your files. And then you would just drag and drop under the assets folder. And then it should pop up as right here as a burrito foundation uh, version six. And then you would just click on that and then it would pop up in your, uh, your overview folder. Awesome, yeah. So just one, it's a simple drag and drop. Go ahead and create, like I said, um, uh, some, let's create some content, right? Yeah. Um, Go ahead, yeah. Is there any specific Unity version we should have for it? Yeah, like I mentioned, um, that's also part of the, the video that I mentioned. Um, we have to have version a specific version, 2018.4.20. If you look at the top right, Steven, can you show them real quick? Uh, yeah. Top corner. Right here. Top corner. Yep. Okay. Uh, version that we're actually working on, right? Cool. Questions? Yeah, like Angelica was mentioning, you can also drag and drop the scene into the, the hierarchy. That will also work. Cool. So in that case, like I mentioned, we're going to... Um, make sure that you create it under floor two, actually. Oh, floor so two. Make sure you under, yep, floor two. Cool. So what he's doing there is basically creating the asset and he's creating it. Um, and it's, it's under floor two. So he has to make sure that it's under that boundary, right? Floor two. So you see he highlighted, you can see the floor being highlighted. It has to be within those boundaries, right? Awesome. Okay, and now I just save. Cool, like I mentioned, yep. Okay. And I should send it back, right? Okay. Send it back, so send. go ahead and send it um, to Discord and I'm gonna go ahead and download that. So like I said, what he's gonna be doing right now is he's gonna be sending back the scene that he created, right? Um, and he's gonna be uh, and I'm going to be downloading that scene. So I'm going to go ahead and download that scene right now. Meanwhile, he's... Just give me a minute. My Discord decided to up, uh, uh, download update right now. Um, cool. So what it has created is, uh, it's not a lot, but imagine that he's creating, like, for example, chairs, he's creating tables, he's creating the wall, he's creating a bunch of things within this, this room, right? But for now, we're just going to keep it simple. We're just going to keep it in, um, like I mentioned, we're just going to keep it simple, right? He's just going to add a chair. But imagine he's adding a bunch of content under floor two, right? Let me just go ahead and share screen real quick. Okay, we're back here. So like I mentioned, I already downloaded um, his version of it. And this is his version. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah, we can see it. Yes. Okay, okay, awesome. So his version is right here actually. And it's the same version as mine, but when I drag it, it should change it. So uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drag it under the assets folder, under the scenes folder. So that's what I'm gonna do. So just go ahead and drag what, what I downloaded. I believe this is it, yeah. So when I click on scenes, I should see a, a, a new version of it. Oh, uh, actually it's, this is, oh. It, auto, by dragging it automatically, uh, Unity made a version seven. So it kind of updated the version. It updated the version. We have a chat here real quick. No, so that's what I'm actually mentioning right now is that when you, when we have the same version name, right? In this case, we had version 0 0.06. In this case, 
his version was also was named 0 0.06, it up the version by one. Does that make sense? So yes. now it's his version is 0 0.07, right? And as, as soon as I dragged it, as you can tell, here's the chair that he created. Does that make sense? So now I'm gonna go ahead and just drag, you see, drag the floor that um, he was in. In this case, he was in floor one, floor two. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this floor, right? Copy it and put it under um, the floor that, uh, the original file, in this case, version 0.06. I'm gonna drag it. And you might be asking, why is it that we just don't keep version 0.07? And that's because there might be, the original file might contain work from other people. In this case, a lot of a lot of other people may have a bunch of work that Steven may not have, right? So I cannot just keep Steven's file um, in place, right? I, I would just be dragging only his items, right? So once I drag that floor, I'm gonna delete the, the old floor. Now we have this floor. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this scene. And now we have this content, his content into the original file now. So this original file will contain Steven's file and any other file that people decided to submit in this case, right? Does that make sense so far? This is how we're gonna be collaborating, basically sharing a bunch of scenes together and making sure that everybody it's under the right scene. So in this case, everybody's gonna have the same version of the file, right? The only difference is that you're gonna be adding your own content in the right floor, right? Under the right floor. Notice that he didn't just have it up, up here, right? He had it within floor two, right? So people are gonna be creating content within the floor and what's it called? Submitting that floor as a scene and a person like me or Steven or Ari might just add the, uh, the your floor or your content to the original file. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions? Like I mentioned, hopefully this is this makes sense. Be honest with There's me if it doesn't. There's a question in chat. Oh, yeah. Uh, Angelica, right? Yeah, so how the order works. What diagram? Um, Angelica, like what diagram you were mentioning? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, so there's a reason why we're doing it this way. We're actually sending files. Well, not really sure what diagram are you mentioning, but I'm assuming you're talking about the collaboration that we talked about before. So there's a reason why we're doing it this way. So there's something called Unity Collab, and this would actually be easier for people to collaborate. So assuming that everybody has a Unity, um, a Unity account, with Unity Collab, everybody would join into this project and submit their own submissions, right? But the problem with that is that collab actually costs money. We can only have up to three people, right? Uh, collaborating at the same time more for free. More than three people, it will start costing money. In this case, we do have a quite few, like eight or nine people that could be collaborating. And obviously we don't have the funds to get everybody a version uh, for, for, for money, right? So the, this is the reason why we're doing it in this way. Uh, we're actually sending scenes to a main person, right? And that person is going to be, um, that person is going to be um, submitting your submissions like how I did. As you notice, Steven gave me a chair and I copied his whole floor and I put it to my original world, right? So yeah, we don't have money to buy everybody a version of Unity so we can collaborate. Maybe in the future we will, but for now we're going to be doing this way, right? Um, like I mentioned, the three main collaborators, right, would basically be either the, the people we select. I'm basically going to be calling them the head editor chiefs, right? Those head editor chiefs are going to be the ones getting submissions. Like in this case, Steven was a submission. Steven gave me a scene and I uh, submitted that scene into the original world. And since we can collaborate up to three people, only three people will be able to make those 
official changes into the world, right? So does anybody have any questions? It's about to be six, but we are gonna, am I gonna teach one last thing before we leave? It should take more, no more than 15 minutes. It, it is gonna take a little longer than the other sessions. And that's how do we create content, right? Because that's exactly what we want to know, right? So let's go ahead and actually do this. If anybody has any questions, I'm gonna go ahead and start the next one. I'm just gonna wait a little bit. Yeah, so we're gonna be sending, um, in this case, we haven't decided who's gonna be the chief, right? Um, but if I, once, as soon as we select who's gonna be the editor chiefs, they're gonna be in charge of basically getting your submissions. So all submissions will be made either through Discord or through email, doesn't matter. Actually, the scene file, this scene file, is not that big, so you should be able to send it through via email or Discord, whichever works best for you. And you'll be sending it to the one of those chiefs that we select, right? And one of those chiefs is gonna be uh, reviewing what you the changes you made, and they're gonna be adding those changes into the original file. Cool. Assuming everybody obviously creates awesome content and everything like that, we will soon then submit this world into VR chat. Is everything, does everything make sense so far? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Cool, I just wanna make sure everybody's on yes. par where, where, what a grid system is, right? What we're talking here about quadrants, we're talking about rooms, right? I wanna make sure that people are familiar with this because essentially people are gonna be talking about um, where to add the content, right? Before, before we start um, building stuff, right? I want to mention something called Pro Builder, right? So Pro Builder, has anybody heard of Pro Builder before? It might be something no. similar to a software that you guys might be using, like Maya. I believe Steven and Carrie was talking about that. Okay, so Pro Builder is basically uh, a way to create content. And what I mean content is the fundamental shapes of everything, right? So for example, if you guys notice, uh, a roof is nothing but a, a square, but well, depending on what roof we're talking about, right? To me, like think of Minecraft, right? So in Minecraft, right, does every, is everybody familiar with Minecraft? Any chance? Yes. I am. Yes. Yeah, so essentially in, in Minecraft, right, we have these blocks and you can add up these blocks, right? And you can create content, right? It's kind of, Unity is kind of the same way, right? But we use a tool called Pro Builder. And this tool is actually a little bit more complex than Minecraft, right? So if, for example, you want to build a house, you can build a house here, right? Using Pro Builder tools. So essentially, Pro Builder is a, a place, uh, your tools to create content here. I actually created something like this. It's actually a pretty um, nasty table. It doesn't have any texture, meaning any actual um viewing things, but if I add texture, let me see, actually, can I, I can actually textures right here. Let's just add this texture on top of this. Cool. If I add a texture pack, you can actually see it now. So let me just add this other one here. Cool. You can see it's kind of like a table and that's what, that was my goal. I'm not, I'm not actually an artist, but for time purposes, I just created this table real quick, right? So how do we create this table, right? And that's using Pro Builder tools. So before that, I want to mention how to actually download this Pro Builder tool. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. Actually, I cannot remove it, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So to build, uh, to install this Pro Builder, right? Because you need you need Pro Builder. We need to, to go do the following. Go up here under Window. Go ahead and select Package Manager, right? And... Under this package manager, there's going to be a bunch of tools that you can actually add. In this case, if we scroll down, we can actually um, select Pro Builder here. And instead of up to date, you're going to see a uh, install version, right? You can actually, you would have to actually install this in order to use Pro Builder. Actually, in fact, in order to use this world, right? Because some of you might be installing this scene or this world uh, onto your Unity, you might see that everything out here might be pink. And if it's pink, it's because you don't have 
either the assets installed or the right tools already installed. So in order for the world to work, for this particular world to work, you need to install three things. And that's Pro Builder, this texture pack called Pavement, um, and VR Chat. Those are the th three things you need to install. Make sure you have installed in order for this world to work. I'm gonna go back on showing you how to install that actually. But for now, just imagine everybody has the tools, right? So let's go ahead and talk about Pro Builder, right? So like I mentioned, go, go to Package Manager, scroll down, look for Pro Builder and hit that install button. That's actually part of Unity. Let's talk about a little bit about, not this. I actually deleted it. It was right here. I'm just gonna pop it again, Pro Builder. So we search up Pro Builder online. This is a little quick explanation of what Pro Builder is and simple visualization. You create things like this, right? Some complex system where this is the content you're gonna be adding, right? So there's stairs and there's cubes and there's polygons all over. This might be something similar you actually uh, seen before in either Maya or somewhere, right? This is actually, Pro Builder was actually something early on as a tool, external tool for, for Unity people. But eventually Unity um, bought them out and started using it for uh, as part of the actual Unity, right? So Unity, this is, Pro Builder is part of Unity now, right? And with Pro Builder, they actually created these games. I'm not sure if everybody's familiar with Super Hot. Well, Pro Builder was used to create those games, right? That's the beauty of this. Um, it's a software, right? So like I mentioned, the key features here is that you can actually create versatile poly shapes, right? Cubes, you can create crazy dimensions, color gradients, a bunch of things you can actually do here. Um, and eventually you can create content like this, right? Some polygon shapes. Obviously this is a low quality polygon. If you guys wanna go more in depth, you would have to create those um, in depth vertices and everything, everything that creates um, a smooth surface, right? So like I mentioned, if you just go to Pro Builder online and search this up, you can actually see the documentation for it and how to get started. But today I'm gonna show you a simple tool, one simple tool, and that would end the lecture. But let me go ahead and start that. Like I mentioned, I created this small little table, right? So let's go ahead and either recreate this or let's create a house, right? So in this case, I'm gonna use, oh, we have chat here. Cool, yeah, and it's actually, that, that is actually pretty awesome. Pro Builder is actually a pretty awesome tool. I cannot teach you everything. So I do recommend you, everybody go out there. There's a bunch of videos. I'm gonna show you a simple explanation how Pro Builder works. Um, but there's a bunch of videos out there that do a better, way better job than me, right? I'm not actually a, a Pro Builder expert, but I, I do know how to use it. Uh, do we have tutorials? I don't have any specific tutorials for you, but I will post the ones I think are best on Discord. So just go ahead and look into the resource channel. Either later today, I will be posting up some tutorials there. But let me go ahead and start this. Let me see. Okay, so yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and install Pro Builder, right? So in order to see this, right? Let me start like this. Pro Builder, once you install Pro Builder under the window as package manager, right? You're gonna see this new tool section up here in the top. So over here in the top, you'll see tools. Under tools, you'll see Pro Builder and go ahead and select Pro Builder window. That will pop this window here, as you, you can tell. So th this will pop this. So at first you're gonna see words here, but I'm a visual learner. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this here, oops. I'm a visual learner, so I don't like to see words. I like to see shapes. So the cool thing about Pro Builder is that if you right click here, you can uh, select eye context mode, right? So you can see icons to see exactly what you're doing here, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. So with this Pro Builder, there's something called shape tool. It actually, it's right here. I'm just gonna put it here. Oops, so everybody can see it. I'm gonna put it here. This shape tool allows us to create a shape um, of any sort, right? And automatically we can give it a shape with specific radius, number of sides, height, smooth segments, basically everything you will need to create content, right? So let's go ahead and create a shape here. So let's create a 
we're going to create this shape. Go ahead, select that shape. Oops. Actually, let me delete this. I'm going to go ahead and click this. In the underneath shape selector, I'm going to go ahead and click build, and that will pop out this shape right here. This shape is blue because it's not an official asset in, in, in the scene, meaning, meaning that this shape does not exist yet. It's in preview mode. It's blue because we haven't done anything yet. Once we hit enter, it would make an official um, object, or once we hit build, it would make an official object. So this shape right here can be versatile, right? The cool thing about Pro Builder is that you can actually select specific things. For example, I don't want a cylinder, cylinder. I want a cube, right? That creates a cube. Let me zoom in here. That creates a cube. I don't want a cube, I want a sprite. And that's, that's a sprite, right? Prism, stairs, right? We can select how many steps you want, right? How many um, sides, curvature, everything. We can create curvature here. This is a beauty of Pro Builder. You can actually create this content. This content's already created for you, and you can actually mess with this, these things and create content faster, right? So I like like I mentioned, I recommend you guys to look into Pro Builder, right, on your own. I'm just showing you a little bit of what it can do and how to use it, right? So. Let's go ahead and select, instead of stairs, let's go ahead and select, let's just say uh, a door, right, for now. And that gives us a semi-looking door. And put this down real quick so it can be in front of us. Cool. So like I mentioned, I want to make sure that this floor is under floor one, right? As you notice, if we just select floor one, visually, we can actually see that it's actually inside the floor one, right? But how can we tell uh, via numbers, right? Or via grid? Well, like I mentioned, this is a grid system, right? And in this case, if we go back to the presentation and we look over here, this floor in this grid system, floor one is should be here in this corner, right? So if we know the grid system, the corner of that floor would be 15, 15. So if we zoom in here, this is the origin. If we move 15 to the right, that's 15, right? 15 top, that's 15. So X, I'm, I would say, uh, let me see if I can actually write here. Insert text. There you go. There you go. I would say it would be, oh, that's black. I mean, that's white. Switch that to... Yeah, I would say that's 15, 15, the coordinates, right? You would think, oh, it's 15, 15, X, Y, right? But actually, because this is Unity, it's actually X, Z. Z is, is our depth system, right? So in other words, the corner of that floor that we were talking about is 15, 15, right? That's the coordinate, right? So how high can we go? Well, if we look over here, the corner, we can only go 30 up, right? So what's 30 plus 15? 45. So that's how high you can actually build. So in other words, essentially giving these numbers, right? You can create boundaries here and we can say, hey, how high can this be? 45, how low can it be? 15. Well, we just have to make sure that any content, like for example, this content right here, the door that, we're, that we were building, it's under 45, which is it, which is, right? This is 40, that's less than 45, right? And above 15, the X value, right? In this case, it's above 15 and less than 40. I mean, less than 45. That's how we can ensure that this door, it's under my boundaries of floor one, right? So everybody will have their own boundaries, right? And just make sure that you don't pass those boundaries and you should be good. Um, okay. Let me continue. So in this door, right, we can say how how wide do we want this. So let's say we want this wide. This is how low we have depth. We have a depth of two. So that will create a depth of two, right? And so on. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit build and that builds our, our door. Let me go ahead and delete the preview. And that makes official content of 
uh, floor. This is an actual con uh, asset now. As you can tell, it's right here. It says door. And I'm going to go ahead and drag this door, on, like I mentioned, under floor one, because that's where I'm having all my content. How you want your hierarchy to be here, that's really up to you, but just make sure it's under floor one. And it's in my case, right? That's one tool, right? The shape selector. I must, I'm going to show you another tool, which is pretty cool. And it's called um, the new polygon shape, right? Polygon shape helps us create points here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a point. Let's just say here. Just I just clicked on it. It's really, it's really hard to see, but there's a point right here. I'm going to go ahead and select another point. I'm going to click here and another one. Click here and so on. These are basically the, uh, the vertex, right? Once you, once you circle around and connect at all the points, it's going to allow you to create depth of the, those points. In this case, it's called extrusion. You can actually see it here. It says extrusion. And as you can tell, it's changing as I do it. I'm, I'm dragging it up and down. So in this case, let's just say I want to create, I'm going to delete this. Oops, delete the wrong one. And I'm going to create a, a hex shape. It's not going to be a look, looking pretty one, but I'm going to create a hex shape right here. As you can tell, it's a hex, right? So like I mentioned, I want to create a table here, right? I'm going to go ahead and click there. That's where I want it. That's where I want my table. And I'm going to go ahead and select this shape up here. It, we have four tools up here. This is actually part of Pro Builder. There's a object selection, vertex selection, edge selection, and face selection. I'm going to go ahead and click on object selection. Once you have object selection, I'm going to go ahead and click on this move tool. This will allow us to move the object anywhere, right? So go ahead and let's hover up here to create a table. I think this table is actually pretty thick. So I'm going to go ahead and say I want is 0 0.5. The extrusion is 0 0.5, right? So that will make a thinner table in this case. Perfect. That's how I like it. Cool. Let me just double check. Awesome. Like I mentioned, this is right here, new game object. I'm going to rewrite this and I'm going to say table top, right? And I'm going to go ahead and drag this under floor one, like I mentioned, because that's where everything is existing in this case, right? So that's one way. Uh, now I need to create like the base, right? In this case, I'm going to go ahead and click on this new shape tool. And that will bring this up again. Instead of a door, I'm going to click on cylinder. So let's click on cylinder. And that brings that up. I don't know why that door came in. Just delete that door. This brings the, again, the cylinder preview, like I mentioned. And I'm going to make it, uh, the radius is going to be one. Let's say. Here, uh, instead of going through these tools, I can I can actually click on these, um, this scale tool right here, and that should allow us to scale this table as much as we want. So let's go ahead and scale it either small, smaller than that, right? Now, this is this is the the stand or where the table is going to stand on, right? And it's pretty small now. I'm gonna go back and hit this move tool right here on the corner. And I'm going to move it where that table is at. So I'm going to go ahead and get closer here. And cool. That's about right. It's not there yet. That's about right. Now, as you notice, I kind of want the stand to touch the floor. So I'm going to do the following thing, right? I'm going to go ahead and Oh, just zoom in a little bit. This is the bottom view of the of the stand, right? I'm gonna go ahead and select the face, the whole, the face, the bottom of the cylinder, right? The face of the cylinder, and extend it. And that's the beauty of these pro to, pro builder tools that you can do that, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this face selection, like like I mentioned, this is part of the Unity. And I'm gonna go ahead and select one of these faces, Oop, not that face, not that face. Oh, I forgot. No, um, despite the, the fact that you have smooth selected, it doesn't really look all that smooth. What doesn't look smooth? 
the cylinder. Oh, right. Uh, as in like, since it's not really, um, you would have to mess with some settings. It's not really, since it's a cylinder, right? It's, it's not, it's a cylinder with number of sides, right? So I can actually select the number of sides I want. In this case, I can say one, that would be a cube, two and so on. In this case, I wanted sides eight and that, that's how many sides I have. Does that make sense? So it yeah, really depends I on the size of, you're talking yeah. about. But I kind of so, expect it to like be round. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But there's some other tools here that you can actually mess with, right? And like I said, like I mentioned, it's up to you to mess with these settings because that's up to the sides, the height and the segments. It's really, it's really different. And that's one of the tools you can actually select. There's more tools here. That's just one of the tools I'm, I'm showing you right now. So does anybody have any questions? I'm make sure the chat is cleared. Okay. Okay, so like I mentioned, I want this, this, this stand to touch the floor, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and finish building because it's, right now it's in preview mode, right? It's not an official object. So I'm gonna just go ahead and click on build. Clicking on that build will make it an official object of this game. Does that make sense? Cool, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that preview. So now, like I mentioned, I wanna create, I wanna make sure this stand touches the floor, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the cylinder, right? Click on this face selection up here. Face selection allows us to pick one of these face selections, right? In this case, I want all of them. So this, I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm holding shift and clicking one of the faces one by one. And that selects the whole bottom of the, of the cylinder, right? I'm gonna go ahead and instead of moving it, I know you see these arrows and it's usually indicates moving. But because we have this face selection, that arrows now means where do you want to um, move that face selection or duplicate? In this case, not right, right? We're not, we don't want to move it to the right. We instead want to move it up and down. So I'm just going to go up and oops, zoom out a little bit. Oops. Let me zoom out real quick so I can show you. There you go and make sure it touches the floor. In this case, that's how far as I can see. Cool. Now, we have a question. Is there any way to group the individual faces of the cylinders? What do you mean by group? As in like, um, just grabbing it? Or what, what do you mean by group? No, so I can actually select only one face within the cylinder, right? So in this case, let's just say I want to select this face, right? I can actually move that one face anywhere I want. If I want to select them all, I would have to hold shift and select each face. Yep. And as you notice, I can also select other Pearl Builder um, shapes, faces as well. And that would essentially helps us move everything at the same time. So that's the beauty of Pro Builder is like just hold sit, shift and any face you want and it would move all together. Um, if you select something by accident, is there a way to deselect a face one at a time? Uh-huh. Was that a question or? Yeah, I was asking you, if you if, say you're selecting multiple faces, your you accidentally select a a face you didn't intend to. It, do you hold shift to and select it again to deselect it, or do you have to start oh, with selecting? You, I believe. Let's see. Um, so it looks like if, if you just hold, um, yeah, if you just click on it again, it should deselect as like as I'm undoing right now. It does okay. deselect. Yeah, just you just have to continually hold shift in order to select the faces. In this case, I'm finished with the stand. Now I'm just gonna move this tabletop and see how it's, it's selecting one face because we're still in the face selection mode. Let's go ahead and move back to the object selection, right? Object selection allows us to use one of these tools up here. So the move tool, the rotate tool and the scale tool, right? So in this case, I'm back to the object selection 
move tool. So I'm moving this table now, right? So it's not recreating or it's not expanding the object, right? Because we're under the object selection, move tool. So I'm just gonna put this down a little bit so it can look like a table. And we have some imperfections here, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and fix those imperfections, right? I'm gonna go ahead and select this, um, this vertex selection, right? Which allows us to get a point within that polygon, right? Or with this, this shape, one of those points and move it as we go. See, I'm gonna move it here. I'm gonna get the bottom one, move it here. That seems about right, that's how I want it. Do the same thing here. And we look around here. And that seems about right. Awesome, so it is not perfect, but that's how that tool works, right? You can actually select any corner you want, right? And as well, if you just hold shift, you can select multiple um, um, vertex, right? And move them at the same time. In this case, I like it the way it is, right? I'm gonna go back here, hit object selection, and that should be it. That's our simple table that we just created, right? As you can tell, we can add actually add some texture pack. I right here downloaded a texture pack uh, and it's called uh, pavement texture packs, right? There's a bunch of pavements texture packs. In this case, we have this one, pavement number 10. And we just drag one of the textures. Let me just actually zoom in. This is the texture pattern right here. If you just drag and drop where you want it, um, it would kind of like wrap the whole texture of the whole object, right? In this case, I want it like this. So now that looks like a nice looking table, right? With some texture packs. So what I created essentially was the fundamentals of creating the table. And on top of that, we just added some textures. Like in this case, if you want a wood table, you would just find a wood texture pack, right? And just slap it on there. It will wrap the whole texture of the object and it would be simple. How do you get this texture packs? Well, if you go here on top of the scene, right? Look here, there should be an asset store. There's actually a bunch of texture packs you can actually download here. There's some that you can actually pay for and there's some that you, you can actually, they're, they're actually free. The pavement texture packs, it's actually free. If you look at the, uh, we have a question. When we get that Unity version scene, do we get to, no. So you don't get these texture packs along with the scene. Unfortunately, that would be too much information to package and send. So we're only sending you the scene. So what I'm gonna show you next is how to get the texture pack because uh, I oh, believe- They're actually asking if they need the texture pack, not if they get it. Oh, do we, oh, do we need it? Yes, we do need it for the world. But like I mentioned, because my world is actually using the pavement texture pack for this, right? The pavements here is for the hallways, right? The hallways are using the texture pack. So if you don't have it installed, it will look pink. If I actually delete the texture pack, you'll see that it's pink. So I'm gonna show you how to get it in a bit because that would be the last thing to show you is how to install this, right, all, all together. Um, but I just wanted to show you the Pro Builder tools. As you notice, I'm doing something fancy, which is I'm selecting any object. And if you double click it, double click in the hierarchy, the object that you want, it should zoom out in a perfect view that you can see the whole object. In this case, I'm gonna click on the floor and double click here and it, it zooms out. You can, also, you can actually do that similar thing by pressing F. So right now I'm gonna be pressing F and it does the same thing. That's a cool way to zoom in and zoom out to objects without having to like uh, do this, what I'm doing, which is zooming in, zooming out. Cool. Like I mentioned, that's a simple way of using uh, Pro Builder. Go ahead and have fun over Spring Break learning these things, right? Because this will help essentially to build the content you want. Um, there's a bunch of things here that ha um, I haven't covered because there's, a, there's so much. It's like another thing you want to learn. And if you are coming from Maya, it's actually pretty similar to this. Um, I was hearing that Maya has a similar tools to this. So it shouldn't be that hard to learn or grasp. But the only thing I do want to mention that whatever content you create, in this case, this cylinder, see see how it's out of place? It's out here, right? I want to make sure it's under uh, floor one, right? So we're just going to go ahead and drag that cylinder under floor one. And now we're just going to say, hey, this is a table stand. 
right? And that is our first object in this world. The cool thing about ProBuilder is that this already, already gives you object collision. So object collision is pretty huge in the game. We want to make sure so the cool thing about ProBuilder is that it gives you object collision so you can start interacting with stuff. So yeah, Wait, that's a little bit how ProBuilder works. Uh, could you repeat that? Go ahead. Can you repeat the collisions? Yeah, object collision. So like I mentioned, like every object right here has collision, meaning you cannot go through it, right? That's the cool thing about Pro Builder. Pro Builder gives you that object collision automatically. So if I launch the game, let me let me actually show you. If I uh, no, actually, it's gonna be pretty buggy, but just believe me when I say when you when I try to go through this object, it won't allow me, right? Just because every Pro Builder has an object collision or a mesh collider. It's actually here. If you select the object itself, you will see something called mesh collider. And that's already automatic selected. So yeah, that's pretty cool for, for the VR chat world, right? Um, cool. So does anybody have any questions? Uh, the goal should be create static. So, so we're not creating any, any functionality in this world yet, not yet. But I do want people who are coding to start messing with some maybe functionality, which I'm going to dive into that in just a small bit towards the end. Um, but the idea here is to create static objects, right? The idea here is to create something that is non-movable and create the foundation of the blueprint of the world. As you mentioned, uh, Steve here for the conference room has created a visualization of how the world should look like, right? We should help out Steve create this content here as well. And over the spring break, I would be hoping that everybody gets a piece of the floor so they can start building this content that they're going to be building. What content are you going to be building? Are going to be building? That's really up to you guys. So go ahead and like look, learn a little bit about ProBuilder online. I Like I said, there's just not enough time to teach you everything just because I want to make sure that everybody has understanding how Unity works overall, right? But over the spring break, if you guys want to, just, just a quick video would help tremendously a lot, right? Awesome. So let me see if there's anything else in the chat. Yeah, like I mentioned, um, yeah, you would, now let's talk about the texture packs because you want to make sure that everybody has uh, the right tools in order for this world to work. So I'm going to go ahead and start uh, I'm going to close this and recreate the world again. So you guys can see how this, this world works, right? So in this case, let's go ahead and let's see this. So we have here the, found, uh, the Unity Foundation. I'm going to go ahead and create a new Unity folder. I mean, project. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and add a new one. So if you guys are uh, with the video that I showed you guys in the very beginning, the first Saturday, um, it should allow you to do the same thing what I'm doing. Uh, so this shouldn't be anything new, but I'm gonna go ahead and teach you either way. So I'm gonna go ahead and click new. And then I'm gonna go ahead and you see. Oh, slow down. Um, is there a reason why? Oh, you're kind of lagging a bit. Am I really lagging? Oh, interesting. So how is it lagging right now? Oh yeah, and someone I can't see the screen. Like yeah. I can see that. Okay, so I'm gonna try to go as slow as I can because I'm not really sure what you guys. Hopefully everybody's um can see what I'm doing and there's no, no intrusion. So like I mentioned, I'm gonna open Unity Hub and I'm gonna click on new, okay? Within that, I'm gonna create a new project. I'll just call it BRC Burrito version two, okay? Obviously select where you wanna save it. In this case, I'm gonna select here and click on 3D, right? Go ahead and create. I'm assuming that obviously you guys have the, the version already installed in you uh, on your Unity Hub. If you guys don't have the right version, 
go ahead and download that version in um, or watch the video how to download that version, right? Like I mentioned the Saturday video, there's a previous video. If you guys don't know how to install this, it should be pretty self-explanatory with Windows, um, but the video shows you how. What I'm essentially showing you here is not how to install it, but how to start the world, right? The world that um, I created or the foundation, the Burrito Foundation. So we're gonna wait until that Unity starts. Hopefully um, it's not laggy. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and select. Uh, this is what how the the new project is gonna work on. What's it called? Um, the new project is gonna um, the new project is gonna look like this, right? So I'm pretty sure when you start a new project, you guys you guys gonna see this empty, right? I'm gonna go ahead and select like like I mentioned. Just drag and drop the scene. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop this, the scene. This is a scene that um, I told you guys it's on Discord or on campus. Just go ahead and once you download it, go ahead and drop it on, under the scenes folder. Once you drag and drop it, right? If you go under scenes, you will see a new, a new scene here under the scenes folder, under the assets folder. So go ahead and drag and drop this under the hierarchy or just double click it whichever one works best, right? And as you can notice, it's that pink hue that I mentioned, right? So if you try to open this just like this, you're missing things, right? You're missing contents. So let's go ahead and install the three things we need in order for this world to work. Like I mentioned, you need three things, right? The first thing is the most important one. That's VR chat SDK. Again, the previous video mentioned how to download VR chat SDK, but if you don't know how, uh, I suggest you go look at that video, right? But assuming you know how, in this case, I already have it, download it. I'm gonna go ahead and import that uh, VR chat SDK or the thing, one of the things that we need for this world to work. So I'm gonna go click here in the assets. Under assets, I'm gonna go here, select import package, custom package, click on that and go, go ahead and look for your uh, VR chat SDK in this case, it's right here for me, it's in my download section. Cool, I'm gonna go ahead and open that. And just gonna wait until it loads. It might take a little bit. This is the thing that takes the most time. So let's just wait, let's just wait for this to load up. In the meantime, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, there's something I just thought of. Um, yeah, when, go ahead. Okay. Like, um, anything that, like, this, it, it, like, the world showed up pink because at first, because of missing um, textures, right? Textures, assets, and uh, there's a bunch of things you guys are missing. Yes. Yes. Okay. I was thinking, like, um, if the, like let's say someone like made a, a model or something and they have made like their own custom texture or like use uh -huh. a different texture outside of what's already there. Yeah, that's a then, really good question. So yeah, I, 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 so I'm assuming your question is uh, how would you add that into the world, right? So whenever you're, you're giving out uh, the scene, right? Your, your scene with your content, the new content that you're creating and it, it involves different textures make sure that you also send textures uh, as well. It shouldn't be big. Um, the texture shouldn't be more than, I say, 10 megabytes or anything like that. Sometimes some textures are actually pretty big, but make sure essentially you send the right textures. If not, you let uh, the editor chief know which textures he needs to download, right? In this case, I'm gonna show you what textures we need to download, right? We don't want it to download all the textures that 
you may not be using, right? We want to only want to download the textures that only your content is using. That will keep the file smaller and easy for us to edit, right? So yes, that's a really good question. Just make sure that whatever content you create and it has specific textures, send it out with the, the, the scene that you um, added to, right? So if there's any other, other questions, I'm gonna go ahead and continue. Okay, cool. So here we're gonna click on import, right? So once you click on the VR chat SDK, import. This is one of the things that we need to download in order for a burrito foundation scene to work. As you can tell, it says right here, VRC world missing prefab, right? So it's missing because we don't have it. Like I mentioned, once you download that under the assets folder, we're gonna have new tools, right? So any tools that you download, they would either be under the assets or under Unity itself. But in this case, most of the time, it's gonna be under the assets folder. And that shouldn't take that long, but sometimes it takes longer. In the meantime, anybody has any additional questions? Hopefully everybody's following along. Hopefully um, it's understandable what I'm doing. It's not that um, challenging. I don't want people to understand, to think that Unity is really complex. It's not really that complex. If you just take the time to, uh, to understand, you don't need to mess with everything. You just need to mess with certain things, right? Okay, I'm checking the chat in the meantime. Yes, um, if anything, do ask for help, right? If you guys need additional help, understanding, feel free to talk in Discord, right? Or talk individually to each other, email, whatever you guys like to use, right? I want everybody to understand at least the foundation of Unity, right? The simple tools that is needed for things to run, right? I wanna make sure that everybody at the end of the semester has at least a little knowledge of how to use Unity rather than how to be an expert in it, right? Because to be an expert, it takes time, effort, right? I wanna make sure this is as simple as possible. So that's why we're not really diving into deep into scripts, rather we're diving into creating content for the world. And the cool thing is that for VR chat, you can actually test that content. Yeah, no, no. Thank you, Ryan, for showing up. Go ahead. And don't worry about this, this video, this is gonna be a recorded video and be sent out to Canvas um, to make sure that you guys can go back and check this out again. Um, yeah, this is the only thing that takes a little bit of time. The rest is pretty easy. Like I mentioned right now, all I'm doing is showing you what tools you need to download in order, in order, in order for this world to work, right? If you don't have these tools, this world is not going to work at all. As you can tell, it's going to be all pink. VR chat SDK is going to take a while. Well, he might just finished. Yeah. I do have a slow laptop. I don't have the best. Cool. Once you download it, as you can tell, we have this popped out and it's still importing more scripts. So we'll just give it some time. And as you can tell under the assets folder, like I mentioned, now we have three new folders, right? Udon, VR chat examples, and VR chat SDK. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for showing up. And I believe that's about it. Yeah, perfect. Uh, well, a few less last the last scripts that always gets me at the time. Cool, and that's about it. So that's one of the things. As you can tell, VR Chat World here says no longer missing. Now it understands what VR Chat World is. Just a re quick recap: VR Chat World essentially think about it as the player itself. That's where the player is gonna. Um, exist right so if you click on that if you see that in the world 
that's where the player is going to uh, spawn in that case, whenever you launch the world. Cool. And that's about it. Hopefully there's nothing else. The next tool that you need for this world to work is the texture packs, like Robert was asking, right? There's some texture packs that this world needs, and we're going to go ahead and download that. So we go here in the asset store, right? In this asset store, we're going to go ahead and search up a texture pack. The specific one that we're going to be searching up is called pavement. In this case, I'm going to click on free. Oops. Um, um. I don't think that's how you spell it. Oh, pavement. <laughs> Wait, actually, I think I have it uh, saved assets. Oops. My assets, real quick. Pavement. Oh, there you go. It's because it's not called pavement. It's actually called something called Hughie's free payments. It has to be specific. So if you guys search this up, I'm just going to search it up. Uh, Hughie's free pavements materials, it will search up this. If, not, if you just search up pavements, my bad. Search up pavements, it would pop up a bunch of pavements. So make sure it says Hughie free pavements, right? Click on that. And go ahead and say import. If it doesn't say import, it says download, right? Go ahead and download it. And once you hit download, go ahead and say import, right? Cool. So th all this is going to be downloading for now. For this purpose, I'm going to download the whole thing. But in the future, we're only going to download certain things, and that's the only texture packs that you are using in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and click on import, and that should actually pretty that should be pretty fast. I'm going to go ahead and select the scene again. Oop, just give it a minute. As it's downloading or importing into the project, and we have a nice screen trip again. Cool. So if you go back to the scene, as you can tell, hey, we have our hallways again, right? Since it has the pavements, right? And that's pretty cool. Now we're missing the rest, which is this and the rest, right? As you can tell, we also have the chair here, right? That Steven um, added here in the content. Um, that's because that's part of VR chat, the SDK VR chat, right? So once we had the VR chat SDK, the chair was able to um, show up, but we're missing the rest. And here comes the last thing, the third thing, and that's Pro Builder. That's the, also the thing we need, right? Pro Builder is the thing that um, that I was showing before, and this is how you download it. So if you go here under uh, Window, right, Package Manager, go ahead and wait for this loading packages to show up. And it should show up here under Just give it some time. My computer is actually pretty slow at this. Cool. So go ahead and search up Pro Builder. In this case, we have it, we have it here, and click on Install. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, like I mentioned, this is going to be a longer video. I mean, longer session than the previous, just because. I want to make sure everybody has at least the proper tools to start creating content. So thank you, Pernian, for showing up. Yeah, of course. Take care, guys. Yeah, once you hit install, let's just wait for that to install. And once you install that, you should see the rest, which Give it a minute. Awesome. And as you tell, I guess you can tell, once we finish building that pro builder, we have the rest of the world, which is pretty dope. Those are the three things you guys need in order for this world to work. Without it, this whole world is going to look pink, right? And if you guys don't, like I said, if you guys are needing trouble how to install this again, just go ahead and, and reach out to me. But this basically concludes the whole um, the whole Saturday. So, like I mentioned, it's if anybody doesn't have any questions, please let me know. 
Um, I hope you guys want specific questions, just hit me up on Discord. My name is Wonderboy. And yeah, like I mentioned, I'm just gonna type in here. Go ahead and just send me a chat if you guys understand. Uh, if you guys have specific questions, right? Like I mentioned, um, I do want people to uh, start creating some content or messing, basically mess around things and basically create the blueprints for this world, right? For each room. So as soon as we have the blueprints for each room, we can start creating this content. Or if you guys want to do something specifically, just go ahead and create it. And maybe after spring break, we can add this to the world, right? If anybody has any questions, you can send them right now or go ahead and that's pretty much concludes everything. It's everybody good? Yeah, oh, all good. Cool. Hopefully this was self-explanatory. Uh, hopefully it wasn't that hard. I know it's a lot to grasp, but like I mentioned, it's for you guys to, to start collaborating, right? To start creating content for the world itself. If no one has any questions, uh, I would like to mention some things. Yep. Uh, Go ahead. So for um, spring break, um, you're mostly meant to just explore like unity how it works and um pro builder as well as um like for some other people if if you know how to use maya and you you know how to import assets from like maya to unity you could learn that as well on your own time uh we kind of just did like a small session here for for getting the grasp of how we're going to co collaborate um, I didn't, I don't think we can get to it this time for distributing like who's going to do what for, for the rooms, but um, definitely I was planning to do like check-ins during the spring break if anyone needed help or if anyone still is lost with the grid and how it works. Uh, so you're going to see emails and um, probably like discord chats for me. Uh, the other thing was um, make sure that you guys have the drive and I'll be uploading the videos there as well as maybe publishing it on YouTube so that way it's more accessible for everyone. Um, so the yeah. Drive. That, yeah? Um, sorry, what do you mean by the drive? Oh, the hard drive. I mean, sorry, the hard drive. The Google Drive that we have been working on for the uh -huh. design plans. So in that drive, um, there's also the video from last week, which was the design plan. Um, I'll, I'll send out another email just in case if no one has access. All right, that's it, that's it for me. Thank you all for showing. Thank you. Is that the one in conference oh, room channel? I that one. Sorry, what? Uh, there's a document in the in the conference room channel on Discord. Is that the one I think you're talking about? Yeah, there should be. Uh, if you open it up, let me know what it opens because it's... yeah, it says top secret project. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, but it doesn't have the drive to like the video. Uh, let me see. No, it's just a document. Okay, I'm gonna upload the um, like the actual folder drive. Awesome. Link. All right. Yeah, awesome. If any, anybody has any questions, um, feel free to ask me right now. I'm basically going to be here until everybody leaves. Um, if you guys have a one-on-one -on -one questions, go ahead and stay. If not, you're pretty much free to go. Like I mentioned, hopefully you guys can work on Pro Builder itself and you guys can start creating some stuff. Thank you. Have a great day. Have a great day. Thank you. Have a great day Likewise. Too. Thank you. Bye. Um, thank you. Goodbye. Peace out, Robert. Okay, it's just us two. Uh, go ahead and end the recording.